This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a comparison smackdown between the Nook Simple Touch on the left and the new Kindle Touch on the right. These are both 6 inch e ink, pearl e ink, that is, ebook readers with long battery life, relatively lightweight, they're about 7.5 ounces each, and they're affordable. The Nook has been dropped in price, so it's now $99, and the Kindle Touch starts at $99. Now, for $99 with the Kindle Touch, you get the With Offers version, as Amazon calls it. That means you're going to see ads instead of screensavers when the device goes to sleep, and you'll see ads listed, as you can see right down here at the bottom of your book listing page. If you don't want the ads, it's $139. If you buy the $99 with ads version decide you can't stand them, you can pay Amazon to have the ad feature removed, and... There you go. You don't have to buy a new Kindle just to get rid of the ads. So as I mentioned, both of these have pearl e-ink displays. It's the latest generation of e-ink display, and they both feature partial refresh, and that means when you turn the page, you don't see that flash to black every single page turn. You see it every sixth page turn. They both do a good job of avoiding ghosting, leaving over little artifacts of black ink, if you will, on the screen. Though the Kindle does offer you the option of turning off that feature and having it refresh and thus flash to black every single page if you do feel you're bothered by the ghosting. Personally, I really haven't had a problem with either. They both do a pretty good job of clearing the screen well enough so you don't see a lot of five o'clock shadow of leftover text from the previous page. Both of these use IR touch sensors, those little IR beams that run out the edge of the bezel here, which is why they do have somewhat sticking out kind of bezels here and that means that there's no layer added on top of the screen so there, there's no murkiness or any of that kind of thing we saw with some of the early attempts at doing touch screens on e-ink readers so great clarity and I would say that these are both very clear sharp e-ink displays especially the Nook has just gotten an updating firmware to 1.1.0 and I, they've sharpened up the fonts there so it's looking real good now one of the big differences in physical ergonomics, you'll see these little ridges here on both sides. These are physical page turn buttons on both sides and you can set one of the top ones or the bottom ones do page forward and then the other ones will do page back. The Kindle does not have physical page turn buttons for those of you who for some reason hate to swipe or tap at the screen. With both of these you can either swipe to turn the page or you can tap this side to move forward, this side to move back. E-ink readers usually do a pretty good job of resisting fingerprints, and they have matte displays too, so they don't show the fingerprints as much, but I have noticed that the Kindle does pick up more fingerprints than the Nook or the Sony PRS-T1, the Sony Wi-Fi 6-inch e-ink reader. It's easy enough to clean with a microfiber cloth, though. Just give it a wipe and they do come off. These are both primarily plastic readers. You can see they're fairly similar in size. The Kindle is taller, but the Nook is wider. It's kind of like that fatty device. See the difference in width. And then you can see the difference in height. So ergonomically, a lot of people find the Nook a little bit more comfortable to hold because it has these nice, nice wide bezel, the page turn buttons, a very rubbery texture that it's not going to slip out of your hands, and a kind of sculpted shaped back here, all soft touch finish. The Kindle, where Amazon used to go for something like style with the Kindle 3 or Kindle keyboard, this is kind of your generic gray slab. Not bad looking, it's compact, it's flat, it fits places, but maybe not quite as comfy to hold as the Nook. One thing about it though is you've got to have wide hands to one hand the Nook across the sides versus the Kindle because it is that much wider. Both of these guys have home buttons of sorts. With the Kindle it just takes you back to this screen that you're looking at right now and this is your book listing screen. This is very much like the previous Kindles that we've seen. It's just a text-based listing. There's no graphical user interface per se on that. The Nook button here works well, like all Nooks, you, you tap it, and this comes up no matter where you are, it's kind of handy. You can jump quickly to settings, to your library, to the home screen, which is what we just saw, and to shop, and to search. So I, I kind of like this as a more elegant way of jumping around to do things. Also with the Nook, you can see the little book symbol up here. No matter where you go, you go, you go shop for a while, you do search, you look at your settings, you can always tap that to return to the book that you're more, most recently reading. Since this runs Android, you also get little notifications up top, too. You can see I have a little number one up here, and that's telling me that my firmware has just been upgraded to 1.1.0. And you can clear that once you've looked at it. Both the readers have Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, and the Kindle is available with a 3G option. A 3G is for shopping for books and downloading books for the Kindle. As far as I know, they're not giving you that free-for-all web browsing experience anymore. You have to use Wi-Fi for that. And if you want to get it with 
3G, it costs 149 with offers and 189 without the ads. The Nook is just a straight Wi-Fi device. Barnes & Noble seems to have given up on the whole concept of 3G readers. So if you don't have Wi-Fi, you don't have access to downloadable books. The Nook Simple Touch is a little bit more, well, they call it simple and they mean it. In terms of audio capabilities, you don't have an MP3 player, you don't have Audible book support. Of course, Audible is owned by Amazon, maybe that's not so much of a surprise. And there is no headphone jack, so sounds of silence with your Nook Simple Touch. The Kindle offers the usual very rudimentary MP3 player. It has audible book support and has speaker and a headphone jack. And it also has text-to-speech. That's if the publisher allows it. Some publishers have been uh, less than willing to allow their books to have text-to-speech, which is pretty amazing considering that you get a very computer-generated sounding voice reading the book. It doesn't sound like uh, a voice actor reading an audible book or something like that. But still, that's an option for many Kindle books, a text-to-speech. No sound, no text-to-speech on the Nook. In terms of battery life, both of these guys are going to last a long time and a charge e-ink readers just do. They only consume power when you turn the page. Just displaying a page like we see now takes no power whatsoever, which is a pretty neat technology. But we just saw this switch to the screensaver, which is an ad for AT&T 4G, by the way. Uh, but back to battery life. Amazon claims that you can go for up to two months on a charge if you read a half an hour per day. And Barnes & Noble claims that you can go up to two months reading an hour per day. Therefore, in terms of claims, Barnes & Noble supposedly is going to run for twice as long as a Kindle. In practice, they both run several weeks. Generally, I recharge my readers oh, every two weeks. I always have Wi-Fi on and I read at least an hour a day. So they're both going to last a long time. The Kindle Touch is too new. We have certainly not had it even for two months. It hasn't been out that long yet, so we can't say if it would ever last that long. But in general, you'll get two, three weeks. In terms of storage, the Nook has two gigs of storage. A good part of that is set aside for books and stuff, magazines that you download from uh, Barnes & Noble. And the Kindle has 4 gigs with that, about 3 gigs being available for your use. But the Nook has a micro SD card slot, pretty nifty. So you can really expand that a lot, and that's under a door here on the side. Stick a card right inside of that slot right there, and you've got a whole lot more storage for your own side-loaded content. With both of these, you can use the included USB cable to sideload. They don't come with chargers anymore. Now that they're trying to make them so cheap, they charge extra, usually about 20 bucks extra for a charger. So at least charge over USB unless you go and buy a charger or you use your cell phone micro USB based charger 5.5 volts. So while the, the Nook loses on audio capabilities having none, it certainly gains for having storage expansion possibilities. In terms of graphical user interface, or just uh, an easier to use interface, the Nook Simple Touch clearly wins. You've got a much more attractive presentation here, probably more intuitive if you hand this to somebody. They're going to start tapping on book covers and swiping through things. And, and this takes full advantage of the fact that it is a touch screen. Now we've jumped into the library listing. And you can see I've got all my covers listed here, and I can sort by most recent title, author. And I can go to a text-based listing if I want to. And I can also do a search. Here we've got that standard Kindle look that we've seen since the first Kindle came out. This is a text-based listing. This is not the most exciting thing to look at, especially for you visual-oriented people. And you can swipe up to go through your listing of everything that you have on the device. So it works, but it doesn't really feel like Amazon worked very hard to, to move into a touch interface with this and do much. Again, with the Nook, we've seen if you want to get to all your menu functions, you tap here, you can jump to your library, home, shop, search, settings. And for this guy, if you want to get to your basic settings, it's sort of, again, like the uh, non-touch screen nooks that had a menu up top and you would use your little D-pad to move around. And you've got the same set of options here that you have on the non-touch Kindles. So the home button takes you back over here. So Barnes & Noble wins for having a more advanced touch interface. Now, granted, they've been making touch interfaces a bit longer than Amazon has. File format support is, is still the same old story. The, the Nook is an EPUB-based reader. A lot of people like EPUB because it gives them more choice for shopping around. The Sony Reader Bookstore, Google Books, and Kobo Books are examples of EPUB-based stores that use a do standard Adobe DRM. This, this supports standard Adobe DRM along with the uh, variation that Barnes & Noble themselves uses, which is a combination of your name and credit card number. 
that's used as a key to unlock books. So that's also something to keep in mind. If you buy books from Barnes & Noble, you can read them on Nook Readers and on the Nook application for Android, iOS, Macs, and PCs, but you can't put them on a Kobo or a Sony Reader because those don't handle this newer four version of Adobe DRM. This does PDFs, and so does the Kindle Touch, and neither of them does it terribly well. But first we'll talk about the Kindle file format, which is still the Amazon format and Mobi format. Amazon really wants you to be buying with them and not at other stores. So if you're a Kindle customer, you're going to stay a Kindle customer if you have a large library of books. Unless you're into breaking DRM, you really need to stick with Kindle or Kindle readers, and again, on Android, iOS, PCs, or Macs to read those books you purchase from Amazon. In terms of PDF handling, it's funny. If you take the two of these and put them together, they have almost the same number of features that you'll find on the Sony Wi-Fi Reader PRST1, which really handles PDFs the best. Now we're looking at the same PDF on both these devices. This is a computer owner's manual, so it has tables and graphical layout. Now there's no pinch zooming with the Nook. What you can do is change your font size. Now this is handy if you happen to get, say, a public library book that's in PDF format. Sometimes they still are, and the text is just too small to read. What you really care about is the text. So you can bring up your text size. You can see quite large. And yes, it's readable, but illustrations are blown out. So for technical presentations, uh, not so much in PDF. Now the Kindle does pinch zooming. So that's kind of nice, except for you're dealing with the very slow refresh of ink, and you're seeing the screen flashing, and then you've got to drag things around, and uh, it, it can be kind of cumbersome. There is no option to change the font size. So this one will blow out the layout but give you readable text. This one will maintain the layout, but at the expense of having readable text or having to pan around a lot. And neither of them supports landscape mode, which is unfortunate for PDFs because often to get the fonts to be readable enough without blowing out the layout, you want to turn them in landscape mode. For those of you who really do want to read PDFs, the PRST1 among 6-inch e-ink readers is still the best. It has both the ability to change the font size and to do zooming as well, and it supports landscape mode. One thing to note about the Kindle is you can bookmark and you can highlight and annotate in a PDF. You can see my options come up to highlight, add note, and to share. The only thing you can do is bookmark in the Nook. Now we're looking at the same book in both readers, obviously one in EPUB format and the other in Amazon Mobi format. And you can see they're both very legible and clear. Now in terms of formatting options and features here, with the Nook you've got Three line spacing options, three margin options, or you can go with publisher's default, quite a few font size options, and you've got your choice of six fonts, which is pretty neat. And here's Amazon's presentation. You just tap on the AA button, which again is reminiscent of the keyboard Kindles. And you can see your options for styling, again, many, many typeface sizes. And your, your font choice is much more limited. Your regular condensed and sans serif. Now, this is by default the serif font that Amazon uses, semi slab, pretty heavy font. So that means technically there really are two fonts because you have a serif and a sans serif font. But other than that, you've got con condensed as your only other option, and line spacing is the same. So the Nook definitely wins for font choices. That said, that Amazon's default font, the serif font, is really nice and clear. And because it is semi slab, that means semi bald it's pretty heavyweight and very easy to see and read. So if you're going to be stuck with one font, it's a pretty nice font to be stuck with, in my opinion. In terms of other features, they both have highlighting, dictionary lookup, and annotation. For the Nook, you tap on a word, and then you can drag your handles around. So you want to highlight a passage, you can see highlight, add note, or look it up. And if you want to add a note, you've got an on-screen keyboard here. And the Kindle you drag and hold and say we want to add a note and there you go. Two very similar interfaces for doing the same thing. Now in terms of web browsing here's a strange story. With, with the Nook Simple Touch it used to be that you couldn't, you know, there was no web browser listed per se but if you use the universal search feature that you could get to by tapping down here and using search you could enter a URL as your search term and it would launch the web browser and take you to that web page. Well, with the latest firmware upgrade, guess what? That's gone. 
And, and goodness only knows why, because this is a Wi-Fi reader, so it's not costing them any money if you want to surf the web using your own Wi-Fi connection. So that feature is now gone from the Nook. The Kindle has the, the web browser that you've probably seen in our video review of all the Kindles, including the Kindle Touch. And it's a WebKit browser that's fairly capable. However, it is e-ink. Uh, again, you've got that panning around the screen refresh stuff. It's not color. But it is handy for things like looking up something in Google or in the Wikipedia, that kind of thing. Even downloading books from some sites that have non-DRM Mobi books that you can download and use. So that's one we can chalk up to the Kindle. At least it still has the web browser. And in terms of seeing these in stores, Amazon Kindle is available in a lot of stores now, so you can actually get a, get to look at this guy before you buy it. Um, obviously, the Nook is in every B and N store. It's also in Best Buy and other locations as well. When it comes to customer support, it's really hard to beat Amazon. The customer is always right with Amazon, in my experience, and they're very easygoing about replacing devices that have problems, even with ebook purchases that have gone awry, that kind of thing. And Barnes & Noble, well, I've never found their telephone support, their online support particularly helpful or knowledgeable. Uh, the customer is certainly not always right in their opinion of things. But if you go into a store, now that's the big added bonus there. They obviously have lots of stores across the country, and the folks there are very knowledgeable and generally very friendly, and they are helpful with questions, problems, concerns that you might have about your Nook. And while you're in the store, you can read for free for an hour at a time. That means anything that's available in the BNN online catalog for sale, you can you can just go ahead and start reading it, which is pretty darn nice. I suppose if you went there every day, you could eventually finish a book a week, say. Also, all BNN has free Wi-Fi, so you can just go in there and look for any special offers. They might be running discounts on stuff, and just use Wi-Fi to, to do what you will. In terms of the shopping experience on these devices, they're, they're both really very pleasant. And we've got the main shopping screen available on both of these. It's pretty, you can just search for anything. It's pretty easy to browse and, and look for stuff, and they always have links to bestsellers and stuff like that. Nook usually sees some special offers going on here and some stuff that you might be able to get in store discount or a free latte or something like that at the cafe. In terms of selection, they both have a very large selection of books. Amazon might still have a few more of the non-public domain books, but they're getting pretty close. Their prices are also, likewise, often fairly close, and that's in part because publishers are setting the pricing these days more so than the book-selling merchant. So either way is a win. It really just is up to you whether you prefer shopping with Amazon or with B&N for your ebooks. They both have magazines and newspapers, but being e-ink, you know, they're not the real exciting, sexy, graphically heavy stuff that you'll see on the LCD-based e-readers that these guys offer. So that's our comparison of the Nook Simple Touch Reader and the Kindle Touch Reader. They're both fine e-ink readers, and they're both very reasonably priced. We give the edge to the Nook for ergonomics, having page turn buttons and having a much more pleasant graphical user interface. And we give the nod to Amazon for their excellent online customer service, their large bookstore, and the fact that it actually has a web browser that you can still access. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website to read reviews of both of these and check out our video reviews on our YouTube channel of both of these devices. And don't forget to subscribe.